Okay, we're going to have a look at sheep and uh, pigs and goats, the sort of typical uh, farm animals that you'd get in many, many landscape paintings. And you can see from the photographs here, I've copied down some of these images using, first of all, the basic shape. Which, let's take this one as an example. You've got the basic shape and see how easy it is using those simple squares and oblongs and triangles to get the correct proportions. Once you've got that basic shape, it's then pretty easy to replicate the realistic outline of the lamb and just recreate it so that you've got a good confident drawing. Now you wouldn't normally or I wouldn't normally draw these uh, on the uh, sheet in this form on the canvas or on the surface I'm painting on. The, the, the way to do it is to uh, do it on a piece of scrap paper and then trace it down or transfer it down in a variety of ways that you can see on the, the drawing for painting uh, DVD. Uh, I'm just doing it this way so it's convenient for you to see what I'm, uh, I'm actually doing. And you can see the colours for the sheep. You can see how this fleecy white image that we have of sheep and particularly of lambs uh, is actually shot to bits when you look at the uh, the sheep in reality. I've done this little lamb pale blue. This is, uh, I suppose this would be this one. Um, because when you start turning the sunlight on, then by adding the lighter colour, then you're going to find that the pale blue gives you the perfect sh shadow colour uh, ready made. And the same thing with the pig here. I've done the pig to uh, a, a pretty well a, a sort of finished state. Right, let's get some of the uh, paints out and just start adding a few details in here and there so you can see how we can bring these sheep to a conclusion. Now I'm going to use these three brushes here and would you believe that we've got a number one round brush and we've got a number O round brush and we've got a number three round brush and although I said at the outset we'd be using the number one round brush you can see uh, how careful you've got to be when you buy round brushes and simply go blindly by the number that's printed on the uh, handle. So I'm going to use those in effect all as a, as a pretend number one brush but you, you can see that the sizes and to some extent the shapes are quite different. Right we'll just add a few more details to this sheep here or these two sheep. Uh, they're looking at sort of a fairly completed stage at the moment but I'll just uh, quickly add a few extra highlights and uh, shadows just to show you how much you can develop these sort of uh, figures. Now the colours I've mixed really I've used titanium white and the yellow ochre and I've just done two or three shades of the same mix by varying the proportions of yellow and white. So I'm going to use that sort of mix there and really at this stage what I'm just doing now is adding a little bit of subtle highlight. I actually need to bring in a little bit more white that's a bit better that starts adding a little bit of highlights and you're looking at areas across the back of the ears. You see incidentally how closely, because I'm in, in doing detail, how near to the ferrule I'm holding the paintbrush. It's almost like a pencil. No problem if you see you get a little bit of hit and miss and the paint gets broken a little bit. It does give you an impression using this sort of broken technique of how you create sort of the layers of wool if you like on the animal. Now we'll come to this sheep here there's going to be a light area here just over the top that's going to be in shadow slightly underneath his chin and we want a little bit of light or a little bit more light rather on the back but you can see that as you're working on it we're starting to get some nice highlights. Now here I've deliberately put a black face on the sheep and what I'm going to do you can see there's quite a light grey here and almost a jet black here on the shadow side but you'd be surprised until you start observing how light a black face can appear when the sunlight's cast on it. You only get the true colour of the or the true sense of the dark by looking at the uh, the colour in its shadow when it's 
immediately out of the sunlight. Here you can see how I'm quite happily painting what amounts to that colour there onto the darker base colour and it doesn't look, it, st or it still looks like it should be black because the eye takes in the shadow side here. Okay, that's fine. I'll leave that for now. You can develop this sort of little scene to the nth degree. You can almost make a little portrait where the landscape almost becomes the supporting cast to the portrait of the sheep if you want. Right, I'm just doing a little bit of work on this, uh, this little baby lamb. You can see I've put shadows around all of the other uh, animals. Um, but I just wanted to show you the way of just highlighting this. You can see I've just put like this pinky purpley colour in which is a lizard, it is a permanent rose rather and ultramarine blue and mostly white and it's really no more than the same as that and what I'm going to do is let that dry and then we'll come back in with the highlights and then when we add the darks for the eyes that'll just finish that little cameo scene off uh, just quite nicely. Right, you can just see I've just added those little eyes in for the uh, for the shit for the lamp, and then just that you can see that's almost like two D shapes on top of each other, just to create the nose and the mouth of this particular lamp. And I'm just doing a little bit of I'll use a little bit of dark brown just, or raw umber anyway, just to give a hint of the lamb's uh, hooves for its back leg. This is actually the back leg here that folds under and forwards. Here is the front leg that folds back towards it. So you have when a lamb or a sheep or many animals in fact, where the, the back legs fold that way, if you can see like that, the fold is so that that folds that way. People mistake this thinking this is the knee and it's a sort of a backwards knee. In fact on most animals like horses, cows, pigs, sheep and certainly goats this in reality equates to our ankle bone and the knee in reality is this bit that just comes out of the body. So if you bear that in mind and imagine this long part of the leg here is what we would regard as the toes and our feet, then that'll give you a much better idea of how this back leg situation works on all sorts of different animals. Perhaps just a little bit more shadow underneath there, just to, it just will help to give us the better shape of the sheep's or the lamb's face. Just put a little bit of that's neat ultramarine blue. I'm just playing around with colours here and I'm just fading that out slightly. And there we are. You can see how the bulk of that blue has stayed underneath the jaw and on this side of the animal. And that gives us a nice little effect of the shape and the outline of the face. Um, I'm going to leave it at that because I think you've now got the idea. Just toning down some of that uh, pink and inside the ears and just sort of blending it so it looks like there's little hairs inside the ears that are sort of partially obscuring it. So there we are. There's sheep and goats and pigs and they're all pretty much the same even though they're slightly different shapes. The, the pig really is, is, is pretty much the same shape as the, as the sheep except that you perhaps use an oval for the body instead of a couple of squares. Although here we've used a couple of ovals. It all really depends on the angle that you're looking at animals. So there we are. There's sheep and pigs and goats.